G'day guys, right here, your coffee coach, and I'm here with one of a special friend of mine, Marcelo Brusi, who imports Brazilian coffee into Australia, and I've been purchasing coffee from him for a couple of years now, and I just love the stories and his values, they align so much with what I want to do, which is to share the stories of all the farmers, the real people. And I'm also joined with Gustavo, who is one of the farmers, on a little trip over from Brazil to Australia to come to Mice and to showcase some of his coffees and do some coffee tastings and share some of the beautiful stories that are going on back in Brazil. Because we all know there's a lot of, lot of upset going on in Brazil with the coffee crisis at the moment, the shortfalls. And so the more word that we get out there into the world, the more that people will understand how great coffee is and how valuable it is. And then we can hopefully get everyone getting paid well, getting everyone valuable, getting all the stories in and sharing the love of this beautiful thing called coffee. And we've got something else special. We'll leave that till the end. So thanks Marcelo for joining me and thanks Gustavo for joining me. Thank you, Rod. Um, I will give you the microphone. We'll have to hand it to you. So if you want to just describe your, you know, growing up in Brazil and your journey, your introduction into coffee and coming over to Australia, and yeah, we'll go from there. Beautiful. Um, so my name is Marcelo. Um, I was born in Brazil. Um, and my history with coffee started uh, with my grandfather or my great-grandfather. <clears throat> my, gr my grandfather's family, his mom and dad, they uh, migrate from Italy to Brazil to replace um, the, the labor, which at that time was um, slaves in 1888. So they migrate from Italy to Brazil and my grandfather was born in a coffee farm in the region of we know today as Alta Mogiana. Hard times, uh, my dad knows the, the story, uh, but we never, uh, the family never uh, owned a, a farm. So as a labor, we understand how hard it is if you don't look after uh, not just the farmer but the, 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 the labor uh, from the farm um, and looking after them. They, they are the real arms, hands and arms for, for the farm. Uh, then my grandfather um, went to Sao Paulo, so they had to leave the farm when my grandfather was 10. And by the age of 18, my grandfather found a job at the coffee export in Santos. And he worked for 35 years until his retirement. So that's a, that's a different story from farmers, but I think um, coffee, I have a, I, I'm absolutely sure coffee runs through my veins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And then for you to continue on in the generations of coffee to bring it into Australia and to start educating Australia on how great Brazilian coffee is because a lot of people don't realize how huge Brazil actually is and I just did a video on a brief history of Brazil of the coffee of Brazil and the introduction of the slaves in in 1724 to work on the plantation coffee plantations and the uh, um, abolishment of slavery in 1888 which is fantastic but the fact that Brazil is so huge it is why it's the biggest global producer of coffee in the world right. because it literally sits perfectly within the belt yeah. and it takes and it's just massive it's bigger than australia people don't realize on the maps brazil looks small right <laughs> but brazil is as big almost as big as the, the usa yes correct. it's bigger than australia yes. and it's like the fourth biggest country in the world correct. i think so it's it's amazing <laughs> massively huge which is why it's such a huge dominant force in the world of coffee and yeah. why it affects the prices all, all the way around the world that's right because of the current crisis that's been happening there with the yeah. frost and covid and short stores everything but for you coming to australia what was it like when you first got to australia and the coffee culture here and you know i think a lot of australians are proud to be you know fantastic at making coffee and you know, enjoying coffee, and we consider ourselves a very big coffee culture country. What was it like for you to bring, introduce your Brazilian heritage and the stories, and how do you, 
you know, find educating people here in Australia now? Well, um, I guess I just found the perfect place to, to be, the perfect, the, the best and perfect place to, to live. But the history began when I, when I migrated from Brazil to Australia. Uh, in my, on my third year, I knew exactly what I was going to do. Uh, I always wanted to follow my grandfather's step in Australia. And I was approached by the Brazil Specialty Coffee Association and that changed everything. I was dealing coffee, I was selling coffee before. Um, I was representing a Brazilian com company, but not specialty coffee. And I always wanted, because of my, my heritage and because I knew that specialty coffee, it's not just quality, about quality, but uh, quality for those who work in, in, in the farm. I was, I was dealing with commer commercial coffee, uh, learning learning English, learning the culture, learning, and I, I realized... You're getting to drink some coffee yes. <laughs> now, which is always a side, side benefit of working in coffee. Is Cheers. To drink. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> so... I'm delicious. Yes. <laughs> um, so syrupy and sweet. It, it is it, one of the... Well, this is uh, Jean's, uh, Gustavo friend. We were introduced to Jean because of Gustavo two or three years ago, and another sustainable. The way I want to do, I want to do coffee, but I have to go back to explain why am I so focused in sustainability? Um, big, well, well, I was approached by BSCA in 2012 to become a member, uh, advocate promoting Brazilian coffee. And I, I really learned uh, the, um, the, um, the, the point to be specialty coffee, um, which goes beyond, goes really beyond um, coffee quality. Uh, sustainability is a key point, um, workers' we uh, welfare, so many points, different points. And I, I have, I have a family. My wife is, um, she works in sustainability. All of these um, shape me to be who I am right now. So I saw, of course, a, a growing market in Australia, demanding for quality more and more. But there was a problem. The biggest producer country wasn't selling yeah. specialty or good quality coffee. So there was a big gap in a, in a demand. So the offer wasn't enough. So I said, well, this is the time to present uh, the, the Australian market, some of the producers in Brazil. So Minas Rio was born to supply only single origin to, to, to supply um, specialty coffee from one farmer. So we started to, to introduce few farmers um, and, and sharing stories about their families. So when I was invited by BSCA to become a member, they introduced me to three or four farmers who were, at that time, focused in specialty, sustainability, family. So all right, let's work together. I've been I'm still and I've been working with the same families since 2012. That is an incredible story and it's why I was so attracted to the idea with Minas Hill because I've been in coffee 22 and a bit years now but the early days and so I came from a background of hating coffee so when I was 17 I hated coffee I'm sorry I hated it because I only ever had instant coffee. It was obviously very low grade um, and it wasn't enjoyable. I, I didn't need the energy. I already had too much energy. I didn't need the energy. I didn't like the taste. I had to put 10 sugars in it just to make it drinkable. So I hated it. I moved to Sydney when I was 17 yeah. and my brother had been um, showing the way of um, making espresso that we now is common, right? Uh, which was David Shomer's original sort of creations. Yeah. And he showed me that coffee can taste as sweet without any additives 
as you know the same way that milk tastes sweet and the same way that lots of natural things taste sweet and so it got me on this journey but for years I was just making coffee I was just a barista making coffee not understanding any of the stories from the roaster behind the roaster and beyond right so I never understood about the farmers I never understood about how the processing works the exporting and it wasn't really until I started doing this where I'm really becoming an ambassador for coffee and diving deeper into the knowledge and understanding of coffee that I started to go, hang on, there's so much that people, even after the years and years and years of being in coffee and in the industry, that I don't, didn't know. And I was like, okay, so my mission is now to educate as many people. And so when I found you and I heard the story of Dulce um, Borges, who has been blind since birth, I went, I've got to tell these stories. And meeting you on, online during COVID and interviewing you, I got to understand that we're very values aligned. We yeah. love people, we love connecting, we love supporting people, and we love high quality things. And I think specialty coffee is just talked about like, oh yeah, this is specialty, this is specialty. And what you described then was great. It's not just about the quality, although there is an actual official band that is the top band called Specialty Coffee. That's right. But it's not just about that. It's about the humans, about the people and about their quality of life and you know about them growing their businesses to provide better coffees for us to enjoy. And people, I don't think, really now even appreciate how lucky we are to be able to drink some of this. That's right. And I will, I'm going to introduce Gustavo now because I think it's a good time because you've got many stories of many different farmers that you support and I would love to tell them all, but we're here with Gustavo. So I would say, let's tell Gustavo's story and let's hear what he has to say. So you want to pass the mic to him? Vai traduzir, né, Marcelo? Boa. Então, meu nome é Gustavo Matias. Eu venho de uma família também de produtor de café. O meu avô era produtor de café na Alta Mogiana. His name is Gustavo Matias, and he's from a coffee producing uh, family. His grandfather uh, was a coffee farmer. E depois, meu avô acabou abandonando a fazenda, e a gente foi para a cidade, todo mundo, minha mãe, né, no caso. A gente, eu trabalhei na área de TI até 2010. And his grandfather unfortunately lost the property due to death, and and the family had to uh, leave the countryside and went to the city. Uh, Gustavo needed to find a different pathway in his, in his career. He worked in IT. <laughs> 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 e prestando serviço para para a empresa, pode falar o nome, né? Eu tava, eu acabei en encontrando o mundo do café e fui trabalhar com eles como exportador de café. And then <coughs> he he's got a, a, a job at um, a coffee farm yeah. to do <coughs> cabling, <laughs> IT, yeah, the, the farm <laughs> wanted to do uh, uh, IT services and, and Gustavo uh, started a job uh, in, yeah. in the farm at the farm days, yeah. in 2010. Desde então, aí eu comecei a, a, a conhecer do mundo do café melhor, né? Provar café e, e negociar o café, entender a, Conheci você. Yeah. <laughs> so due to his um, uh, heritage in, in the coffee and um, from his grandfather, the farmer uh, introduced him to to the to the coffee world. So yeah. he started to uh, do some courses, try different coffees, varieties, and um, he fell in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not? <laughs> E em 2012 eu conheci o Marcelo. Em 2012 we met. E aí nós começamos a um trabalho aqui na Austrália juntos, né, com a fazenda que eu trabalhava. We started a, 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 to develop a relationship together in Australia. É. Desde então a gente vem caminhando juntos. Since é. then we've been developing the market. Um, first I'm adding to to his um, a, so at the beginning, he was working for that farm. He introduced me to that farm, and I started to buy from that farm. Guess what farm is that? Bom Jesus, right. the number one. Yes. The number one specialty coffee sold in Australia for seven years. 
It's Bomb. Yeah. Everyone loves Bomb. And thanks to Gustavo, who was the guy who uh, bothered to call me from Brazil and say, um, you are the member of the ICA. Do you want some coffee? I have I work for Bomb Jesus Fan. Send me samples. And I remember that I applied the samples to coffee rolls. And I said, this is what we <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> and funny that Bomb, Bomb Jesus is not fermented. Bom Jesus is not high acidity, is the caramel, the soft caramel most people are looking at for a good blender. And we are now developing different farms. Yeah. He now runs, he's a Q grader, he runs, uh, he's a Q grader, but... We started with Q grader? Yeah. yeah. Oh, as well. Wow. So he's yeah. a Q grader and he's a coffee trader, professional. Yeah. Yeah. He knows about future markets, contracts, stock market positions oh, wow. in and out food. so all yeah, wow. yeah in coffee or in coffee, every coffee yeah in coffee in futures. coffee field, yeah, yeah. Wow. in coffee okay. futures so he's a valuable resource and asset to Minas Hill to understand the market to in order for me to go and see roses with confidence because I have um, I have Gustavo at, at the background, yeah. explaining yeah. The, the whole situation. Sim, eu tenho vivido lá o, a situação no Brasil, acompanhado. He's been living the situation in Brazil. He's acompanha o mercado, a produção, following up the market, the needs of customers. E desde 2017, né, a gente começou a expandir além de Bom Jesus para outras fazendas onde a gente abriu mais produtores. Pra... And since 2017, we expanded to all the farms. Yes. That is amazing, and thank you for sharing your knowledge and your story here. Uh, do you need to translate back to him, or do you speak? You understand English? Sorry. That's right. I was just thinking. Oh, maybe you need to translate back. But that's good that you I understand. I didn't realize this way that. Way. <laughs> Um, but that's fantastic because, yeah, I, I literally just finished filming um, uh, the Brief History of Brazil video and just my search, like, you know, I, I, I like to dig deep into the journalistic side of things to really understand what's going on. And, you know, I, I realise there's lots of sensitive issues with this slave labour, uh, with how COVID, you know, affected Brazil. And there are things that obviously I want to be sensitive to as well because you know Brazilians just like Australians are proud people and it's not fair to say that Brazilians didn't handle it right or Brazilians didn't do this certain areas because of yeah. governments or whatever it is didn't didn't um, serve the people well but the thing is the the beauty of it is that by educating people like people on YouTube and people around the world we can all start to come together and I think coffee is one of the best products to bring people together because you meet up for a coffee right like yeah. so before all of that we were meeting together in coffee houses to just chat and talk like we are today and so it I think it's super important to okay what's happened in the last two years has happened we are I think 11% shortfall um, of what I understood is about 200 million kilos shortfall in from Brazil production wise it's more than that. more than that okay it's more than that. well maybe we can use this next section to talk about the things of what coffee the future of coffee is because as bad as you know that shortfall is I see it as an opportunity because Brazil even though producing less coffee than the previous year you still made 15% more profits than the previous year, That's which right. says that people are starting to pay more, hopefully to the farmers, hopefully to the retails, you know, like, and then that flow on effect just becomes that we value coffee more. And I would love for me personally to see your regular coffee bag, a kilo of coffee being sold for $200 a kilo, because, and, and maybe even more, because what the people at home don't realize is if you're making 100 coffees, 100 shots of coffee out of a kilo of coffee, that's only $2 a shot. It's still half the price of what you currently pay for a coffee and, and you know, plus your milk, if you drink milk. It's still, it's still cheap. Like, but we don't need to be paying farmers 
30 cents a kilo in order for these massive corporations to profit and then sell the coffee at $45 so that the consumer goes, I, that's all I think coffee's worth. I want to be able to push it to the point that people go, you know what, whatever the coffee costs, I'm not gonna stop drinking it. I buy four glasses of wine and that costs me $60 or you know, $40 to $60 for four glasses of wine. That's right. I'm happy to pay $10 for a cup of coffee if I need to because it's valuable, not a yeah. commodity. It's a luxury <laughs> item. Yeah, that, that's right, right. Um, <clears throat> I, I think all goes through education. Yeah. I, I do believe, and look, um, I've been doing this for 10 years, yeah. uh, educating uh, consumers, uh, end consumers, educating not my roasters, uh, but educating my, the consumers, the customers of my roasters. We all need to understand that coffee for more than 10 years was so cheap in the origin, farmers barely could um, um, pay the, the debts. Yeah. So we, what we were seeing up to 2019 <clears throat> was um, farmers desperate to sell for more. And the only way to do that is Adding, adding value to your coffee, yeah. okay? So the Brazilian farmers, they realize, all right, coffee at the stock market is so low, I can barely pay my, my employees and the farm can't produce good quality coffee. Yeah. So if I invest and I find a right channel to sell my good quality coffee, I can increase my price and I can, I can pay my, my debts. Yes. If not, if they don't have, or if they are pressured by big corporations, they will not invest in quality and in people, in nothing. So it'll be the same same. So what is right to understand especially when people say $5, $6, $4 a, a cup of coffee. That's nothing. If you know what's behind the coffee, this is still cheap. And we should all understand raising awareness before making any judgment. Our, our farmers, uh, even the small ones, they are investing in quality in order to sell for more. So you have a story from a family, a great cup of coffee, sustainable. You can make sure there's no children working in the farm. The farm keeps 20% or more of the, the, the natural resources intact. So we, it's time to put in consideration what is one thing, what is another thing. So if you, bump into a dollar, two dollar cup of coffee, mm, there is something wrong. There is something wrong because that's not the real price of sustainable coffee. So where can coffee go from here? Because coffee is still subjective, you know? So some people are happy to drink instant coffee. And then, you know, they don't mind. But this, I, I, in my research, I found if you want to save money on, like the education around coffee is still so low. People still think that coffee, a coffee bean is full of only caffeine, right? When we know that it's one or 2%, and then there's 98% of proteins, carbohydrates, potassiums, vitamins, yeah. the list goes on, right? Yeah. Riboflavins, it's amazing the amount of beneficial goodness that's, that's in right. locked in a coffee bean. It's not just caffeine. Caffeine is one tiny portion of that. And if you really wanted to have cheap energy drink, there are pills that you can buy, which are caffeine, that give you the same dose of caffeine as four coffees yep. in one tiny pill. You can buy it over the counter. It's 10 cents. So why isn't everyone just doing that? You know, it's not about the caffeine. The caffeine is one component. There's coffee is about enjoyment and it's about bringing people together. How can, through education, and through, say, with the looking at the future of Brazil in particular, because obviously Brazil has the biggest sway, how can we help 
guide people into valuing coffee enough or even the same as we do wine, craft beers, craft spirits or any other luxury item, what is it that we need to help like other than the education, what can Brazil do or what do you see in the future of coffee that can help educate and deliver that value? Como é que você vê o mercado aprender a tomar melhores cafés? O que você acha que o mercado tem que saber para aprender? Então, uma das melhores coisas de valorização do café, o que tem acontecido é o produtor conhecer o café dele e melhorar o produto dele e oferecer um valor agregado de qualidade, que é o que tem acontecido muito. So the best thing, according to Gustavo, is educate the farmer as well. So the farmer he must know what he's selling because in the past farmers didn't didn't even know what he was selling. A great coffee and an export company exploiting the, the poor farmer. Oh uh, yeah, it's average. But the coffee was amazing. E esse trabalho é recente. Ele tem This is a recent work. É, apesar de ter empresas que têm mais de 20 anos já no mercado de especial, mas é um trabalho que começou a chegar no produtor há pouco tempo, há 15 anos talvez. Despite é. this market is 20, 25 years um, old, just recently it went back to the farmer. How long? How recent? How 15 anos talvez. É. 15? Dos 20, 15? É, uns, uns 15 anos a 20 anos aí começou. Não, aí você está é. tá sendo muito Não. abrangente. Não, <risos> he needs to... <risos> Você falou que o mercado, apesar de ter 20 anos o mercado de especial, Empresas. só recentemente que Os o produtor. Chegou no produtor. E você falou que 20 anos também o produtor. Não, não, então, uns 15 anos o produtor começou a... Então, ao mesmo tempo. É, mais ou menos ao mesmo Mas tempo. Mas tipo, você está sendo incoerente. <risos> não estou, porque é o seguinte, ó. As empresas começaram quando os produtores começaram a descobrir também. Mas quando que os produtores começaram a descobrir que o café deles era bom? Você não pode falar o mesmo... Ao e... mesmo período. O mesmo período, porque é. você não faz muito incoerente. Cinco você anos, pensa, três a anos. A Labareda não começou em 2006 a vender especial? Já existiam empresas, só que ela foi uma das pioneiras. Não, você está dizendo... É. Não, não deu essa é. resposta. É. Porque há 20 anos, so the market is 20 years old of uh -huh. specialty. É. But the farmers only knew they were selling specialty. 14 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years, 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 years ago, 10 years ago, 10 years ago. And when did they start getting paid for the specialty? Like when? Quando que eles começaram no Brasil a receber pela uh -huh. pelo, pela qualidade? Tá. Quando que isso daí começou mais ou menos? Pelo período que eu comecei a trabalhar em 2010, né, recente, tem 12 anos, foi mais ou menos o mesmo movimento e eu já entrei no setor de especial, né? Então eu acredito que há uns de 2000 e 15, talvez para cá, eles 2015. começaram a... na nossa yes, região. Close, é. Wow, so it's literally seven years ago, yeah. less, less than seven years. Yeah. Well, right, I would say before that, and I, I'm, I, I, I'm a witness of, of this movement, um, the big corporations were hiding the quality from the farmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as grandes corporações não falavam que o café do fazendeiro Sim, era é. bom para não, não pagar mais. É, é. <laughs> And uh, like I really understand that we we kind of need the big corporations because obviously mass adoption. We you know we as much as I would, don't drink in Starbucks ever. Starbucks was critical in getting that mass adoption of drinking coffee as a takeaway or as a in a cafe and it allowed everyone to you know instead of drinking instant at home for you know two cents or whatever they would go out and buy a coffee for three dollars so i understand that starbucks was great in that way however we've got to find a balance between the big corporations to help move the coffee but also help people like we really need them to be showcasing specialty coffee or like well actually i'll position it how can we use the big corporations to help better educate people about specialty coffee? Um, I think, in my opinion, um, only with big corporations we would be able to have coffee. And that's, that's one thing. But I'm niche and I'm happy to be the choice yes. for those who are willing to know more yeah. about coffee, yeah. to know more about Dona Dulce, mm. 
who, know, who wants to know more about Pedro Gabarra, the most sustainable farmer. And this is what I want to do. I want to be um, connected to sustainability. I want to be connected to social. Uh, I want to raise awareness to the Amazon forest, to the conservation in Brazil. I'm enjoying the journey. I'm, I'm really enjoying the journey. Only those who know our work would judge what we do because it's not about the profits. It's about it's about teasing the market yeah. and, and, and having fun. Yeah. That's perfect because it is. It's so much bigger than you or me or Gustavo. Yeah. It's about coffee itself and yeah. that my 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 whole thing about coffee is just as I hated coffee from whatever stories I had when I was a kid and my experiences with coffee and my lack of understanding, I got on that train and I went down that rabbit hole and I journeyed down into deeper, deeper, deeper coffee. How good can it get? Where can it go? What does it tell me? Yeah. And I think that's the way we help people is if we get them, whether it through device reviews, technology, tasting coffees, cafes, whatever it is, once you're on that train, once you're going down the rabbit hole of exploring coffee, it's, well, it's firstly massively rewarding because you yes. get to drink coffee all day and that's the best, best reward ever. That's right. But also it's exciting and like you said, we're having fun. Like it should be about having fun. Yes. And the more that people understand that, you know, this is not cigarettes, this, we're not selling drugs, we're not, this is not, there's so much media around the vile, disgusting, addictive substance that coffee is and you know, social pressures and big corporations. That's not coffee. That's one media telling you that. This is not anywhere like any of those things. This is a plant, a, a cherry, is the only cherry that I know of, the only stone fruit that I ever know of that we take the flesh away, we take the seed out, we dry it, out, we wash it, we dry it out on beds, we then roast it, we then crush it, we then put pressure on it and Isn't squeeze it this liquid out of it, exactly. and then we get that. <laughs> that. It's like how cool is that? Like, what? Nothing else no, in nothing, the world not does this. No. And not only that, but it's healthy for you. That's right. That's and that's right. what people need to understand. I'm, that's right. So um, I, when I when I connect with farmers in Brazil and I visit them um, and they tell stories of big corporations in Brazil uh, visiting them and and putting prices themselves in that coffee and saying <clears throat> they know they can sell to Minas Hill for more and they say yeah but I paid for the whole production but I paid this little but I, I, I pay you up from so it's 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 for me it's uh, it's um, it's it's a type of blackmail. Yeah. It's a type of um, pr um, financial pressure uh, from big multinationals, and this is exactly what they do yeah. for for a hundred years. So if you can find fight head to head, uh, my suggestion is enjoy the ride and 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 you know. Have fun yeah. and, and, and see what happens. Yeah. I, I think maybe the big corporations don't like me. Or I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> but I, because I buy, I go to Sitio Dona Dulce Pinheirinho and I buy for what's worth and even more. And I, I you know, I'm part of the family. Yeah. And she said, oh, the other day the big corporation came here, offered half of that, but they said, I'll pay up front, we pay. And he said, no, no, this is for Marcelo. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I think Gustavo uh, knows uh, because Gustavo uh, was dealing uh, before Minas Hill or in between with big corporations. And I can ask Gustavo, who did the farmers want to work with? If big corporations or, or Minas Hill? Uh, did you? Minas Hill, of course. <laughs> we, we, I think we value the story, we value the coffee, we value the flavor. Um, we have fun. We bring people from Australia to Brazil. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm coming next year. Yeah. <laughs>
I've got a question for you, Gustavo, because you're into tech. So I've been, I'm, I'm a big tech fan as well, and I've obviously been following the developments of blockchain. And I'd love to know how you see blockchain really helping the farmers, because I think that transparency piece will really play a big part in helping the farmers get paid, not just fair, this whole fair trade price, but I like to use the term mutually beneficial. I don't know if you need to translate mutually beneficial, but... Yeah. But that's what we should be talking about, not fair, because fair price means someone's getting screwed still. Seria muito interessante isso tomar uma proporção. It gives transparency né? to the whole chain. E tomaria uma proporção que o pessoal tem acesso à informação, né? Hoje é, o produtor talvez não tenha tanto acesso à informação do que está acontecendo aqui fora com o café dele. These days the producer doesn't have access of what's going on with yeah. his coffee mm. when they sell. So with the blockchain and yeah. the crypto, they, they can show that. Yeah, show that. Então, Uh, tem empresas como a Minas Rio que mostram o que acontece com o café, mas a grande maioria, o volume, ele não sabe onde vai parar o café dele. Companies like Minas Rio, we show um, what will happen to their coffee, but the big corporations, the producers don't know uh, when they sell to the big corporations, where the coffee goes yeah. and what happens to yeah. the coffee. Uh, as, as grandes empresas agora estão criando divisões de especial, tentando fazer esse trabalho e mostrando, mas o blockchain seria uma caminho interessante para essa yeah. transparência. Now the big the big corporations are turning their their attention to specialty and creating department um, aside the, the the commercial ones, yeah. but blockchain will give transparency yeah. to the producers. How far off are we talking before most of the farmers? Because obviously technology is slowly to roll out. How how many years do you see it before it's a part of our daily lives for farmers to use blockchain? Quantos anos você acha que ainda falta para os produtores entrarem nessa nesse mundo do blockchain? Eu acredito que nós conhecemos muito produtores que já têm os seus 60 anos e os filhos deles estão assumindo essas fazendas. We know a lot of producers um, on the age of 60, but their kids are now going into digital, yeah. crypto, blockchain. Eu acredito que essa nova geração This new generation, da, da minha yeah. idade, His age? Yeah. vai já se atentar para todo esse lado tecnológico de blockchain, transparência, we'll informação. Will be attentful yeah. to the, these new technologies. Awesome. Yes. So Eu acho que essa é a geração que vai acontecer isso. He thinks that his generation is the generation that will bring up all yeah. these new technologies. Right. That's awesome. All right, well, I, we will touch on our, the last bit, ah. which is a little secret baby that uh, Marcelo has been working on. I only just found out about this today as well, so this is exciting for me. Um, tell us a bit about this, because this is not coffee we're talking about now, but it's still something that's as imperative to Brazilian lifestyle. And uh, do you want to talk about your latest baby launch? Um, so, um Minas Rio has always been uh, focused in sustainability, social. We have um, each of the single farms we work with, the big ones have uh, social or environmental projects. Three years ago, we decided to raise the awareness of the um, issues with the Amazon forest. Um, we all know um, the Brazilian government um, is a government focused in um, false fake development of the Amazon and therefore Amazon which is has always been in threat has now losing um, vegetal forestation vegetal cover in a pace that very soon will not be won't be sustainable, will no longer be sustainable. So what we are seeing is uh, um, um, two cocos uh, from Amazon uh, forest. The, the, my, my main goal with this product is 
raising awareness with the young generation of Australians. Um, if we lose the Amazon forest, we lose ourselves. The, the climate regulations will be compromised and um, the, the future of the, the new generations and climate change will be even harsher than what it is right now. So I decided with a friend in Brazil to bring cocoa from two different co-ops in the Amazon. And th these two co-ops, um, sustainable co-ops, don't use child labor. Uh, there's no deforestation. The, the, the forest canopy must be intact to, for the uh, cocoa trees to flourish. Um, and these two co-ops is the, the um, uh, is the, um, where this, this family get their earnings. Uh, so they, they really keep the forest intact. Um, and also from illegal loggers and illegal miners as well. So this is um, a fully sustainable drinking chocolate uh, from the Amazon forest. Um, the drinking chocolate is sweetened with rapadura, Brazilian panela, organic from sustainable farm. It's a niche, it's a choice, and I, the, the, the main thing is I want to be a one-stop shop for sustainable coffee roasters. Uh, those coffee roasters who are happy to uh, stock this product along with the coffee we bring, um, and then we can develop stories with the Amazonian. I want to show the size of the Amazon forest. And I don't know, many people don't know, but the Amazon that comprises Brazil, Guyana, Venezuela, Colombia, and Peru, a bit of Bolivia, is the size of Australia. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> we are losing in a rate, they say in 30 years, it'll be a savanna with no trees. So I think this is the time I don't know what's, what, what will um, come around from this product, but um, if I can raise awareness of this new generation of young Australians, oh, there's a forest in Brazil called Amazon, Amazon I, um, uh, that'll be amazing. And I'll see, if, well, it's delicious too. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a massive online marketplace that sells everything. Amazon actually is a forest. Um, but I'm so excited for this. I will definitely be stocking this uh, down the track. As soon as I get my hands on the stock, I'll be putting it up on the website so you can purchase it there, coffeebeansdelivered.com.au. Thank you guys for talking with me. It's been amazing, and I'm sure the viewers will also feel just amazing at like this. It's exciting times that we live in today with the generations coming up. We're going to be down in MICE next week uh, in Melbourne at the Melbourne International Coffee Expo. We'll get to see you again there. We'll get to experience the cupping sessions there. Well, I want to talk to, uh, Pier, what did you say who I need Pedro to talk Gavara. to? Pedro Gavara. Pedro Gavara, I have to learn my pronunciation there. But we'll get to talk to him as well and talk about us running a sustainable and carbon neutral, carbon positive farm. So very exciting stuff. It'll be indeed, Pedro will be at MICE. Uh, Pedro is the most sustainable farmer, coffee farmer in Brazil, has won so many awards, uh, completely focused in nature, and we'll be talking about Wings Project. He helps uh, uh, birds recovery, the birds that are smuggled in, in, in pet bottles, and he, he recover and releases the birds into back into the nature it'll be an amazing experience of amazing chat that it's, it's giving me chills just talking about it so yeah that thank you for that and thank you to black sheep roasters that were here and who gave us the space to be able to record this video it's been great the coffee has been fantastic so yeah give give them a look up black sheep roasters um i'm ride your coffee coach and as always enjoy your brew <laughs>